Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interest in life.com. You're joining me on board good old narrowboat Tilly and today in a break from my usual videos where I'm shouting at the camera and wildly flailing my arms around and gesturing about things over there and over here and so on. This is going to be a nice, quiet, calm, relaxing bedtime chat as many people have requested me to try and do some more of this sort of video. I've attempted them in the past but very often find myself getting carried away and starting to raise the volume a little bit. So hopefully this will be a nice, relaxing, just almost silent, lull you to sleep sort of video. So. What better thing to talk about in a nice, calm, relaxing bedtime chat than a nice, calm, relaxing bedtime on board the boat? In fact, bedtime on the boat is probably going to be the title of this video by the time you're seeing it. So then, really, I just wanted to sit down and talk a little bit about one of the things that I absolutely love about boat life, and that is, as I always say, mooring up in these super rural places and having that perfect sort of countryside surroundings to go off exploring. But also the other side of that is obviously when the sun goes down and it gets a little bit chilly out there and all the mist starts rising off the canal and it's not really outdoor time, that is very often snuggling up on board on the sofa bed here and just being in a totally perfect silent environment with nothing but random little drips and splashes as random creatures go about the uh, towpath and on the far side in all the reeds and greenery often just through the windows to the water side of the boat it's nothing but fields and the fields like rolling down to the actual water itself and sometimes you wake up and there might be a couple of sheep or cows or something like that wandering by and if you've seen many of my previous videos you've probably seen some of the incident or not incidents but some of the moments where I've been boating down the canal and been racing a cow that's been right on the edge of the water and things like that and it's well like you say it's fantastic during the daytime but being able to get ready and snuggle up, get the fire going. Um, as you see, I've got my little fairy lights dotted around. In fact, if I lift the camera up here, hopefully I can figure out how to do it. You can see there's various degrees and various levels of these lights dotted around. And I've got a slightly bigger LED that's giving this proper light to me. But as I've said many times, what an absolutely beautiful environment to just relax and then finally drift off to sleep. I mean, I'm normally listening to podcasts or something, as many of you know, I'm a huge podcast and audiobook fan, so much so that I actually recorded my own audiobook, which I, th I think it's probably easier to listen to an audiobook than it is to record them. That's what I'll say on that experience. But anyway, back on to the, the actual topic of just peaceful evenings and I'm hoping that this is going to be the sort of video that people are expecting it to be who've been asking for this where I basically just talk about random stuff in a calm way and I don't know if that's intended to make you steadily start to nod off or what have you because as I've said in the past people tend to watch these videos before bed and so on um, so anyway as I was saying back on track I'll put on the screen now a quick video clip as I'm talking of just what's immediately outside the boat on this particular moment. And it's, again, one of these perfect places where, well, to the back of the boat, there is literally an enormous nature reserve with nothing at all. It's just basically marshy, boggy flatlands. Then you've got no real villages even, not even small towns, so you're not even getting to villages really for miles to the back of the boat. To the front of the boat you've probably got about three or four miles to Whitchurch in a straight line, which again isn't the biggest of places, but it's certainly, certainly classed as a small town I'd say. And because of that, the area that we're in is super rural and super quiet, but also, as many of you know, I'm a huge fan of astronomy, although I'm much more into naked eye astronomy than anything else and looking for shooting stars and stuff like that these days. It's almost going back to 
a couple of years before I had the boat and first got into astronomy properly and didn't have like a super duper telescope so I'd just go out and spend hours looking at the sky with a tiny pair of binoculars and just my naked eyes but that's one of the great things that I love being able to be out in the middle of nowhere like this and looking up on a sky so crammed full of stars that it's like wow how can this be the same sky that I've looked up from town or from various places in the past and seeing not even a fraction of the amount of stars that you can see out in these really perfect zero well not zero but very little very low light pollution areas and again that also has the knock-on effect of being that sort of calming, relaxing thing. As I'm quite literally talking, sometimes you can stop and listen and not hear anything whatsoever that isn't just a natural noise, whether that's sheep in a field rustling in the reeds, whether it's, um, I don't know, just the wind in the trees and stuff like that. It's, it is just absolutely fantastic. Of course, in a lot of cases, you still have like a distant road somewhere. For example, tonight, it's one of those great incidents where you're sort of in such a rural place that the bridge that's only about 100, 100, no, I'd say actually further than that. But basically, there's a bridge just at the end of this little straight part of Canal and just the other side of some 48 hour moorings, basically. And as I was walking down to Tilly today, there were a load of cows being shepherded over the top and over the bridge. And it was one of those moments where I'm just walking down the canal. It's beautiful sunset. Well, not quite sunset, but it's a beautiful summer's evening. You've got the little hint of gold starting to come into the sunlight. And it's just that perfect scene of like the canal's empty. And the only things that you can see that are clear signs of some sort of living beast is a low, well, quite literally a herd of cows just walking across a bridge. And you think, have I stepped back in time? Is this actually happening right now? Or am I seeing a random rip in the fabric of time and I'm just glimpsing into the past? And so I fetched Tilly up here a couple of miles this evening and I moored up here and course had that as I was saying and the main point of this uh, little uh, aside was that mooring up here because all the cows had come into the field uh, next to where Tilly's moored up now you had all of the general uh, mooing and braying and I don't know whatever noises cows make other than moo but an awful lot of din and racket in the late evening part and now it seems to have completely died off I can hear this tractors out I'm not sure whether they're um, reaping any crops or something but there's tractors out maybe a mile or so in that direction I think and you can just hear them every now and then when they start to come up to I don't know just up random little muddy tracks across the fields and that I assume go into wherever the farmhouse is for that particular farm and I mean it's again it's just that crazy thing of like wow we're somewhere so rural that it's actually got a little bit of background noise because of all the farming that's actually actively going on here and another thing that I think is that when I go and spend time in town or when I spend time at my friends houses and that it's just it's weird how you can have a really quiet night but just because you're in the middle of a town or in a village or in a street with different people in it you suddenly find yourself being like oh this is a lovely quiet evening but you can always hear someone and you can always hear something going on whether that's cars racing out of town down the bypass roads or well just these distant sounds that are all so familiar that you start to tune out to them and then once you get out into real peace and quiet once again for well like I say I mean for three years it's coming up to that I've had to and it's something that I've tried to talk about in the past and get the point across of like how quiet it can be out in the middle of nowhere and I mean certainly because I'm a big fan of astronomy and that especially in the summer months I tend to be out extremely late and it's another thing that I've talked about and written about in my books and that of where I like to try and moor Tilly slightly away from other boats if there are a few around just so that firstly you don't have to sort of interfere with each other and you can feel like sort of I suppose uh, 
not under pressure if you want to lounge about on the stern or whatever. But it's that sort of not disturbing each other. And particularly because I tend to bike in and out of town or to my friends and turn up at the boat really late at night and leave really early in the mornings, depending on where she is and whether I'm going to my friend's houses, whether I've got work that day. And of course, the astronomy thing, it's like getting my telescope and taking it on and off the boat, just that it's only, well, it's not the world's most technical telescope, but it's definitely one of those things where I think I would rather be slightly away from everybody and not have them hear me rustling around and banging about with a telescope to then look out of their window in the middle of the night and see me on my knees on the towpath with some bizarre contraption that it doesn't look like a traditional telescope so I'd rather not arouse suspicions and again I mean there's been times where I've come back to the boats and there's one time at St Martin's by the locks where I bike down from my friend's house where I'd been in the evening and night. I can't think what time it was, but the person on the boat behind me saw me and saw like torches flashing around on Tilly. And they, I saw him, I'm sure at the time, I think it was that night, it might be somewhere else, but I saw the uh, lights come on in the boat behind and what have you. And then in the morning, the chap said to me, oh yeah wasn't sure what was going on last night so I did have a look and again it's that sort of thing that even doing my best to be quiet and get completely out of uh, the way somebody I do I suppose that if they were up and already about then if the, it's always going to arouse your suspicions if in the middle of the night you hear somebody walking past you both I suppose but just the fact that there was somebody actually with their eye on Tilly and that well I was or well they thought I was away and of course, like you say, then when I turned up in the middle of the night, probably in my usual way, dressed in all dark green and brown dark colours, possibly with a balaclava on, who knows, it depends how cold it is, and never quite looking like the least suspicious person on the towpath. Um, Really, I suppose on that note, I'm going to stop wittering on at you because this video's gone on a surprisingly long amount. So, until the next time, I hope you have a good night's sleep if you're watching this in bed. Feel free to check out my other videos and subscribe if you haven't already for weekly boating videos, biking, all sorts of scenery. And check, all out, check out over 800 videos now on this channel. I mean, I don't know how I've managed to rattle that many up, but thank you very much for everybody tuning in and spreading the word and all that sort of stuff. Please do consider checking out my books available for the Kindle if you so wish. Uh, search Amazon for The Narrowboat Lad or find links in the description below to all of the boaty books and so on. And of course, also, please do feel free to add me on Facebook and Twitter and like the Facebook page. I can't respond to Facebook messages, unfortunately, anymore. There are now is easily over a thousand unread messages just on my personal account alone. And unfortunately, it's just the amazing support that I've had off everybody has made it reach the crazy level that it's impossible for me to respond to all of the messages that I get. So please don't be offended and please know that I am incredibly grateful for all of the support that I've had. So thank you so much for everything. And until the next time, keep it bedtime worthy, keep it boat worthy and of course, farewell.